hope when you're walking through a hard time and you're, you know, walk by faith when everything around you looks dark and dim. It's discerning the times and season by getting a hope from God. Um, whew, getting, getting a hope from God. <laughs> To be able to see, to discern the times and the seasons that's ahead of you. And the thing about the elephant, it wasn't just an ordinary elephant, it was a wild elephant. A wild elephant. It was radical, 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 radical. And the elephant means a great impact. And I really felt like what happened in Lakeland was just the beginning. It was just an introduction. Father, you said in your word. Yes. Any man that lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Yes. No man can be successful as President of the United States without your wisdom. Father, we just secure him right now by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 We thank you that no weapon formed against him will be able to prosper. And any kind Amen. of fight Amen. 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 They couldn't stay in that little building. And the whole place began to shake. And they walked out in the street. Hallelujah. And it's about to happen again. Who is the big who's the biggest failure in the Bible? Who is the big who's the biggest failure in the Bible? God is. God is. G God is. What you say? <laughs> All right, we'll see what we can do here. Okay. <laughs>
Somebody said, well, all that's not necessary. Who said so? I would laugh if I was you. The anointing is transferable. The anointing is transferable. I didn't intend to go this way. So I'm going to get with Anna So, very quick. But the Holy Ghost got hungry. But the Holy Ghost got hungry. Hallelujah. 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 false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before.
recently I was in Redding, California, and I had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. It was real. And I was sitting in this green room in a chair. I was in a chair just like this. Literally saw heaven open. My eyes were open. And I saw heaven open. And I saw the Lord step out of heaven. Literally step for seen. Kind of remind, reminded me of the movie Family. For the church. Through a hard time and you're, you know, walk by faith when everything around you looks dark and dim. Is discerning the times and season by getting a hope from God. Uh, getting... Fire Township ministry people, this glory cloud just came. It just started hovering somewhere over the platform. I'm not sure where that one was, but there's this cloud. It was cloud. It's hard to explain. It looks like smoke, it looks like dust, and when you get close, it's like gold. It's it's shiny. It's like little flakes, teeny mini little flakes. <laughs> And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. <laughs> I want you to really think, how good has God been to you? What is the value of His grace, of salvation, of His love, of His mercy, of His peace, of the presence of the Holy Spirit, of the person of Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ, per 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 Grace is a person. Jesus Christ. Grace is a person. Grace. Grace is the person of Jesus Christ. Grace is a person. And when you encounter the person, grace teaches. There's something about grace. When you encounter grace, it teaches you. Grace is a teacher. It teaches you to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Amen, Pastor Prince. Preach. No. We preach grace. And grace will teach. The Bible says that the law is just a shadow. It was a symbol, a shadow, a picture. Why do I want to look at the shadow when the reality is here? Jesus Christ. Christ in you. Not ten things on stone. A person in you.
a person in you. Grace is the person of Jesus Christ. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh? Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Grace is the person of Jesus Christ. Grace is the person. And when you encounter the person, grace teaches. There's something about grace. When you encounter grace, it teaches you. Grace is a teacher. It teaches you to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Amen. Pastor Prince, preach. No. We preach grace. And grace will teach.
I want you to really think, how good has God been to you? What is the value of his grace, of salvation, of his love, of his mercy, of his peace, of the presence of the Holy Spirit, of the person of Jesus Christ? Grace is not a doctrine, it's not a subject. Grace is a person. Christ in you. Not ten things on stone, a person in you. Was the burnt offering. If Jesus didn't suffer hell's flames for us. If Jesus didn't suffer hell's flames for us. What was the burnt offering for? Why did the lamb have to be burnt? Oh, they were having the biggest party that ever been had. They had my Jesus in the floor, and they were standing on his back, jumping up and down and laughing, and he had become sin. Don't you think that God was pacing, wanting to put a stop to what was going on? All the hosts of hell were up on him. Up on him. Up on him. You know what the word begotten means? It means reborn. Are you... Do you, do you want another shaka? Have you been begotten? So has he. Don't let anyone deceive you. Jesus was reborn. Jesus was reborn. He was the first one to ever be born again! I see it! I see it! A born again man defeated all of hell! Oh my God! I'm no less born again than he was! Whoa! I'm born after him! He gave me for the word that he spoke to his disciples just before he went to Calvary, just before he died and went to hell and took our place and suffered in the region of the town. I am... I am unapologetically a hyper grace preacher hooper perizio super abundance of grace upon super abundance of grace whenever you read the law you should never feel secure it's not designed to make you secure when jesus preached the law in matthew 5 matthew 6 and matthew 7 all before the cross my goodness me if that's the law for the new covenant i'm out of it now my goodness me, that if that's the law for the new covenant, I'm out of it now. No longer under laws and rules and regulations, instead you're going to be motivated by me, it's relationship. And so we're saying, no, 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 but I still need a part of the law. You know, the, the theologians, the scholars come out, they say, oh, yeah, 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 we're dead to, uh, yeah, yeah, we're dead to the sacrificial system, yeah. We're, we're dead to, the, to the, uh, uh, the regulations about washings and the wardrobe restrictions, yeah, 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 but we still need the ten to motivate us. Well, 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 we're, we're free from the Sabbath. Okay, so it's the Nine Commandments? You see what we're doing? We're nervous about sin. And so we begin to fashion a safety net with nine moral laws. And one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these.
If you love me, keep my commandments. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do, that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal. And God says, do you really think I'm going to motivate you to steal? Do you really think, led by the Spirit, I'm going to lead you to lie? Do you really think I'm going to lead you into adultery, that that's part of my character? What about the Holy Spirit? What about the Holy Spirit? What about the Holy Spirit? If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The age of the law is over. What about the Holy Spirit? The law kills. So what is true circumcision? It's when the belief of the law is cut away out of my heart. When God spoke the law, God meant to bring man to the end of himself. Yes. The Ten Commandments, listen, kills. The Ten Commandments, listen, kills. The Ten Commandments, listen, kills. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? Ye serpents, 
ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? When Satan cannot come directly, he has no authority on earth. He has to possess a body. So he possessed a snake. The snake was upright in those days. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And when he has come, when the Holy Spirit has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Stop here. Look, look, look at me. You know, I've, I've heard so many people, when they touch on this, that's where they stop. They will say, the Holy Spirit has come to convict us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. It's like all trees for us. Pakaliao. Pakaliao means uh, everything. Taken. All right? It's like, they take sin, righteous judgment, all for the believer. But thank God, Jesus expounded. Because Jesus foresaw there'll be people who are against the grace message. So Jesus took his time to explain of sin, singular sin. Because they, not you, now he's talking to his disciples. Notice this phrase. He's talking to his disciples and he said, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin because they do not believe on me. We all have been convicted at one time of this sin. Unbelief in Christ. That's why you are a believer today. Do you know that's the only sin? The Holy Spirit convicts the believer of. But the problem is that we have a, a system of theology that teaches people. Every day the Holy Spirit points to you your faults. Every day the Holy Spirit points. He's pointing always. You know, and that's not even Bible. I'm showing you the Bible what Jesus said. The Holy Spirit does not convict you of sin, believer. The Holy Spirit does not convict you of sin, believer. He convicts you once before you are a believer of your sin of unbelief in Christ. But once you believe on Christ, you know what he convicts you of? The next statement, of righteousness. So you have to know that you are righteous by faith. And the Holy Spirit has been sent to indwell you to convict you of righteousness. Yes. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And the Holy Spirit has been sent to indwell you, to convict you of righteousness. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. You have an everlasting righteousness, a righteousness that you cannot lose through sin. You have an everlasting righteousness, a righteousness that you cannot lose to oh, sin. Oh, it's judge. Well, thank God he mentioned it, the devil being judged. Or else you think that the Holy Spirit, if he stops there of judgment, we think, oh, judging us. This judgment is not for people whose judgment is past. Christ was judged in our place. We cannot be judged. We cannot be judged. Amen. Even when you sin, there's no more judgment.
Even when you sin, there's no more judgment. You know that uh, uh, blessing of the Holy Spirit is something a Christian can never commit. The scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, He has an unclean spirit. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Do you know that uh, uh, blessing of the Holy Spirit is something a Christian can never commit? It is something that the Pharisees committed because they see Jesus in the flesh. Grace is the person of Jesus Christ. And they say that what he did is by the devil. Who has, who has hoodwinked us? Who has put the wheel over our eyes all these years? But the moment you hear grace, be careful, watch that guy. He's a grace preacher, watch him. Watch him. Oh, the way the flex comes up. When somebody preaches the law, there are no flex. Everybody receives it, swallows the whole thing. Hook, line, sinker, the fisherman and his boots. <laughs> Everything. There's no, there's, it's a conspiracy of the devil. It's a conspiracy of the devil. And they say that what he did is by the devil. And Jesus says this sin has no forgiveness. Five times more food. Five time, five changes of anointing. The anointing is transferable. The anointing is transferable. Uh, okay. And the Holy Spirit to me is like the genie from Aladdin. I view the Holy Spirit like the genie from Aladdin. And he's blue. And he's funny. And he's sneaky. According to Rob Rufus, Grace haters are the legalists who will try to intimidate, manipulate, and dominate people with a spirit of witchcraft, but with a spirit of witchcraft. <laughs> and I'll tell you why this gospel of grace is worth defending. It's because the demonic is against the message of grace because the devil is a controller on it. And for me, I feel like I'm just unstopping, all right, uncovering all that the devil has tried to put dirt in it. The devil has tried to put dirt in it. I mean, I thank God for, for you know, teachers like Brother Copeland, mm -hmm. you know, Br Brother Hagen. You sit still. You sit right where you are. Don't you turn that off and say, well, I ain't going to vote anyway. You're going to be held seriously, seriously to account by God if you don't vote. And you're going to find that out before this broadcast is over. You're going to be guilty of murder. You're going to be guilty of an abomination of God. You're going to be guilty of an abomination of God. 
Father, you said in your word, Yes, Lord. Any man that lacks wisdom, <laughs> let him ask of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Who giveth liberally to all men, Lord, and upbraideth not. But let him ask of God. just going to tell the truth. Amen. I'm not going to be critical, but I'm not going to be a politician. I'm going to be a prophet. I'm going to be a prophet. I'm going to be a prophet.